Okay, further mathematics question 7, OCRA, mechanics, 2019. The uh, question caused quite a bit of difficulty, but I think because some of the algebra involved is not that difficult, but it was easy to make mistakes at the end of a long paper. I think by the end, by the time people got here, they kind of a little bit lose in the world to live because it was a tough paper. And this question is reasonably tough as well. Feels a bit unusual, but I think hopefully when we go through it, we'll see it wasn't too bad. Um, so the basic idea is that so you, you've got a particle on the edge of a sphere on some planet with gravitational gamma uh, acceleration due to gra uh, gravity gamma and it's being basically um, it's been basically released from rest so at some point here say it's going to become a projectile so we really need to work out what that length is what that at what point it is kind of leaving the surface of the sphere before we go anywhere and then presumably we can split it into two bits because the question asks the the, the, the distance of so we'll have to kind of add the two bits together but we're definitely going to need to find the point at which it leaves the sphere okay so let's um go about this and um let's just set it up I'm letting beta be the angle because they've talked about alpha being the angle it is with the vertical. Let's let beta be the angle at which it leaves the vertical. And let's call this velocity it leaves the vertical when it leaves the sphere, sorry, the surface of the sphere. Let that be equal to V. Okay, so let's work with that and let's uh, see if we can get some expressions going for V and for beta and whatever so first thing we need to use uh, energy right so we've got energy we've got the total energy before well there is it's being released from rest so we can talk about the potential energy if we talk if we kind of call the the bottom zero potential energy then the potential energy at the point p will be this distance here which is r cos alpha times by m gamma which is our acceleration due to gra gravity is the potential energy before and that's good there's no kinetic energy here with when it gets to this point q we'll call it then we can say that uh, the potential energy is half m v squared okay and the so not the, the kinetic energy is half m v squared and the potential energy will be m gamma r cos beta okay so m cancels and we can substitute in the three quarters at this point for cos alpha because cos alpha is three quarters is given in the question three quarters gamma r is equal to half v squared plus gamma r cos beta okay so that's using energy and we'll leave it there let's tell we can tidy up later let's use f equals ma i'm going to draw this separately now okay so we've got the weight coming down which is m gamma so tempted to put g because we're so used to that but we're on the another planet here literally and so we've got m gamma and this angle here is beta so this therefore this angle is beta and what we're going to do is apply f equals ma towards center so we're at q And remember, it's about to leave the surface of the hemisphere at this point. And what does that mean? Well, 
see, uh, before it leaves the hemisphere, there's going to be a reaction force, but which will be gradually reducing. When it's just on the point of leaving the sphere, the reaction force will be equal to zero. So, so zero, R equals to zero at this point. So there's no reaction force. So the only force acting on it is the weight. So we can set, we can basically apply that towards the center. So we've got M gamma cos beta is equal to M V squared over the radius of the circle, which is R. So M cancels. So M cancels again. And we can now substitute V squared back into the expression above and get cos beta. And we can get V for that matter. So let's do that. So sub V squared in. So sub V squared in. And we have three quarters gamma R is equal to half times by V squared is gamma cos beta times by R plus gamma R cos beta. Okay, so that gives us three quarters gamma cancels. So we can cancel out gamma. And we can also cancel out R. So we just get a nice expression for cos beta. So we get three quarters is equal to three over two cos beta. So cos beta equals to half. So that gives us beta equals 60 degrees, although we're never asked for, for that angle, but it's 60 degrees at the point where it leaves this uh, sphere. Let's sub that back, uh, let's sub the, be the cos beta back into half to get an expression for V squared and for V. Of course, we can put cos beta back into either expression here or here, but it'll be easier to put into the second one. So we can then say that gamma cos beta which is equal to half is equal to v squared r so that gives us v squared is equal to r gamma over 2 or v is equal to the square root of r gamma over 2 okay so far so good uh, let's just uh, now go back to our general strategy so just to reflect back on what we, what, what, how far we are now, we've worked out the angle which it leaves the sphere. We've worked out that this angle here is 60 degrees. Let's mark on some other, we, uh, other angles whilst we're at it. We can see that this angle here will also be 60 degrees here. And also we can see that this angle here is 60 degrees. And as I suggested before, we want to remember in what we were, where we want to head to, we want the whole length OF. We can now get this length re reasonably easily because that will just be equal to R sine 60. So that's R the square root of three over two. Okay, so we now need to work this length out, and there's quite a lot involved here, so let's just draw that separately. As we said, we've worked out the velocity as well. This is square root of r gamma over 2. So we just need to split those that velocity into our two bits here knowing that this angle is 60 degrees and work with projectiles really um, we also know the length from here to here that length is equal to r that length is equal to r cos 60 which is r over 2 okay and so we're what we want to work out this length here we could call it l 
no we better not call it L yeah we can call it L because R is the radius so we can call that length L and then we can find the total length at the end so let's uh, so it's basically a projectiles question that we need to uh, deal with so let's do s equals ut plus half 80 onwards and we need to do that because we, what we're going to need to do is work out the time it takes to get to the bot uh, to get to the bottom here and then we can use the fact that the horizontal speed is constant because it, it uh, when we've done that to work out what the horizontal distance l traveled is so we can work out the horizontal speed covered s is equal to r over 2 here u remember it's the vertical component so that will be the r gamma over 2 and that will be sine 60 times by t plus half and remember what the acceleration due to gra gra gravity is gamma so tempting to write g all the time but it's gamma because we're on this on this planet so then that uh, we can tidy up a bit and sub sine 60 is a square root of 3 over 2 and we can tidy that up a bit well let's just not rush it too much we can square root of 3 over 2 let's write that as half and let's sub the square root of 3 inside the the square root that's already there plus a half gamma t squared right now what i'm going to do is i'm going to just tidy up and times through by two the square root of two and bring to one side because we've got a quadratic here so that's gamma t squared times by the square root of two plus square root of 3 r gamma t and we've got then r over 2 will become minus the square root of 2 r equals 0 so then we don't forget to use the quadratic formula you can't use a calculator here so many people get used so used to not having to apply the quadratic formula but we've got we're, we're using this now because it's algebraic so we've got no choice so we've got t equals to minus b which is equal to the neg negative of that plus or minus now the minus isn't going to mean anything here because that would mean the whole answer is negative and so therefore kind of negative time in this context so um, we can ignore the negative because it's not relevant and the square root of b squared which is 3r gamma plus or minus um, no so minus 4 times by a which is the square root of 2 gamma times by c which is equal to minus the square root of 2 r all over 2a which is 2 the square root of 2 gamma so tidying this up a little bit not a lot but it can be tidied up a bit 3r gamma it's more mainly the inside of here this bit here will be will come to plus 8 gamma r and we've already got 3 gamma r there so that's 11 r gamma all over 2 the square root of 2 gamma right okay so that's the time um so i think by this stage it's the 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 algebra is looking a little bit odd to us so i think a lot of people start losing the way long before this point because it does feel strange but the mechanics isn't really that um earth saturn um so let's just uh we now can talk about the horizontal distance so horizontal distance distance is equal to speed times time basically but it, we need the horizontal component of the speed 
going back to that remember it will be cos 60 there so that will be equal to l equals to speed which is equal to let's say it's r gamma over 2 times by cos 60 because we want the horizontal bit times by this expression for time here so that's minus the square root of 3 r gamma plus the square root of 11 r gamma all over to the square root of 2 gamma right so cos 60 is equal to a half so multiplying that all out that's just a half there so save myself a line of work and that's just equal to half multiplying at the top i'm going to have r gamma times by minus 3 r the square root of minus the square root of 3 r gamma that's going to come to minus the square root of 3 times by r gamma without a square root and then r gamma times by 11 the square root of 11 r gamma will be plus the square root of 11 r gamma with that being outside the square root and then that equals to on the bottom we've got a square root of 2 but we've already got we've also got the half because of the cos 60 so you've got 2 to the square root of 2 times by 2 to the square root of 2 which is 8 gamma now the nice thing here is that gamma cancels so gamma cancels so we end up with l is equal to 1 over 8 well it's r gamma over 8 even times by minus the square root of 3 plus the square root of 11 but don't that's no we're not quite out of the woods yet we might remember general going back to this general strategy we add that's that's the distance we just worked out is that distance we need to add on the square root of uh, r the square root of 3 over 2 so so the distance of is equal to l plus r the square root of 3 over 2 So that's equal to, oh, apologies, the gamma obviously cancels, as I said. I put it in there, it's a mistake. So it's equal to r over 8 times by minus the square root of 3 plus the square root of 11 plus square root of 3 over 2, r. Let's multiply this out. So we've got minus the square root of 3 over 8r plus the square root of 11 over 8r plus the square root of 3 over 2r and these two can be the, the square root of 3 bits can be cancelled so that gives me 3 the square root of 3 over 8r plus 11 over 8 square root of 11 over 8r and that is the final answer so I might put it all over one Thing like this don't know if it looks any better or not but that is the final answer well done to anyone who got that given the grade boundaries i doubt if there were many because it was quite high grade boundaries for this paper right that is it for that question nearly let's go back to there was a part b to the question a little bit of a modeling thing one mark we've got our 11 marks nailed here it says uh, remember the whole thing was Felt a bit odd because we couldn't put G's anywhere. Um, so we've got, because we've got this gamma thing here. It says the acceleration due to gravity on and near the surface of planet Earth is 6 gamma. Explain whether OF would decrease, increase, decrease or remain unchanged if the action were repeated on planet Earth. So basically, does it make any difference? And if so, in what direction? If it were in planet Earth, does the grav does the actual gravity um, make any difference to the distance travelled? And the answer is it doesn't. You know, it'll make a lot of difference to a lot of things, like um, 
for example the speed it with which it hits the ground the speed with which it leaves the surface because if we look at these things we can see that um, our, exp our expression for v did have a gamma in it but our final expression doesn't have a gamma in it so it would be un the answer is it's unchanged final answer is in independent of gamma gamma and that's it so they will ask these kind of modeling questions interpretation quite a bit of emphasis on that in the new spec okay so i hope you find this useful bye